Well, I've been doing just a, a little bit of monitoring for the 12-volt uh, auxiliary battery for the Tesla Model S. Uh, now, one of the things Tesla has gotten somewhat plagued with were defective 12 volt batteries. Sorry. Um, and uh, I guess apparently, reportedly, part of the problem with it was uh, they bought the 12 volt auxiliary batteries. They contracted to an American company who then outsourced those 12, you know, skimmed off the top, took, took their, their cut skimmed off the top and then outsourced those batteries to China. The Chinese factory then supposedly out took their cut, outsourced them to Vietnam. Uh, all fine and dandy, but along the lines there's a lot of quality control that was lost. Uh, now I can't verify that story, that's just what I've read. So don't take that as 100% or fact at all. Um, but I decided to monitor my battery. Um, now I've been reading forum posts on Tesla Motors Club about um, some people that have no noticed or had knowingly bad batteries. Uh, they were watching their battery voltage, and uh, if they were below like 12 points two or something like that, they wouldn't leave the house. They'd charge it up until they got their replacement. Um, now, I did have the four windows of my car roll themselves down. I thought someone was playing, one of the guys at my shop were playing a joke on me. Uh, apparently not. Um, that was just a couple days after uh, I had gotten the vehicle. Um, so... I, you know, I just kind of disregarded it. It was no big deal. It only happened the one time, so I'm like, eh, it can't be that big of a deal. Um, after I'd found out that it was, you know, if your, bat your auxiliary battery goes low, the car rolls all four windows down to provide access to the car. Um, which I think is kind of a stupid idea, since you can access the... Uh, the uh, terminals to recharge the 12 volt battery from the nose cone. Um, yeah, it's nice to get into the vehicle, but randomly rolling down all four windows could be the winter time, could be the summer time, could be uh, hurricane season. Especially if it's raining, that would really suck to have your car fill up with water. Who's going to cover that? Would that be Tesla's going to pay for the damage? Who knows? But anyways, back to the monitoring the voltage of the battery. You guys know I like to ramble a bit. Um, 13.85 volts my battery's at right now. So far, my battery's held a apparently decent charge. I have not seen the voltage on my battery at all, and yes, I have verified the accuracy of my meter against uh, a couple other batteries, as well as um, a many hundred dollar fluke meter. I know this is just a two dollar little Harbor Freight one. Um, and feel like leaving my expensive fluke sitting in the uh, sunshine all day in my uh, ProClip iPhone holder, which, by the way, was the, uh, the very first ProClip ever for the Tesla Model S, because they use this car as a, to make, uh, you know, demo, you know, manufacture their clips, which is kind of neat. Anyways, um... I'm going to give my my opinion on the, uh, the, the status of the battery and how the Model S is charging it and what I think also is co contributing to failure is um, they're pumping way too much voltage into these batteries. Float voltage on an AGM or gel cell should be around like 13.2 volts, 13.5 at a full charge. At no time have I ever seen the 12 volt battery on this car lower than 13.6 so it seems like it's always dumping current into the battery it never stops now the 12 volt outlet in here does cut out after you know you exit the vehicle uh, the, the USB outlets seem to remain on for quite a while and actually in one case overnight as it was able to completely recharge my iPad um, 
we're at 13.86 volts right now. All day yesterday, we're at about 14.4-ish, roughly right around there, you know, wavering a little bit. And uh, I'm going to roll down my window. Roll, roll up the window. Wavers just slightly. Uh, now, i got a, a few theories, because I'm measuring this through the 12-volt uh, outlet inside the car. Um, i got one th possibility, as the, of course none of us really know exactly how the electronics of this car are manufactured and set up. Um, one possibility is uh, this outlet's running off the DC to DC converter instead of off the 12-volt battery, which really shouldn't make too much of a difference. Um, it might be doing that to avoid putting load on the 12-volt uh, battery and the causing premature failure. That's a possibility. Um, otherwise, I, I can't even really speculate too much more because we have no idea how the charging system of this car is set up. Um, I will let you guys know that I'm still on firmware 4.4. Uh, I, I have not been sent the upgrade notice yet. So I have not upgraded, and I'm at 5,000 miles on the car, and uh, for those of you screaming battery degradation, um, so far I started out the first day I got the car, a full standard charge was 190 miles. Exactly two months, well, it would be exactly two months with the vehicle tomorrow, and I'm still at 190 miles. I've done now like five range charges just to be on the safe side, but I have driven it immediately as soon as the range charge is finished. So it's not like it's sat with a range charge in there. I've drained this thing down to less than 10 miles six or seven times. So, but when I can, I charge at a, a lower amperage so it finishes just in time for my daily drive. And uh, we're sure going through a lot of traffic today. But, uh, that's the big thing is this, uh, just an opinion because uh, AGMs and glass mat, absorbed glass, mat, uh, absorbed glass mat batteries and gel cells, I can't remember offhand exactly which one this car had, um, don't like the float voltages being too high. You start, start to uh, cause some damage to them. Uh, another thing is I don't know what amperage the car is still putting into the battery. Um, I was unable to measure that from the terminal leads that are accessible to me in the nose cone. Um, so even though the voltages are high on the battery, I, I don't know what, what amperage the car is pumping in. Could be 5 amps, could be 20 amps, or could be 100 milliamps. I don't know. But uh, to be able to maintain a higher voltage like this, on a, I think they said it's about a 30 amp hour auxiliary battery. 30 amp hour auxiliary battery that's lead acid, uh, fully charged with no load on it, would need a about a 200 milliamp sustained load. I mean, uh, charge, you know, current going into it to be able to maintain 13.8 volts roughly. Because we're running at about one volt higher and about. 0.8 to 1 volt higher uh, than a 12 volt battery should be at rest. Now, all, obviously, we have the uh, screen running, and you know we're, we are running the car. Um, although the, the voltages don't seem to waver too much, whether we're moving, not moving, or even when I measure them at the terminals under the hood or under the nose cone, doesn't seem to make too much of a difference. Because when I measure it in there. I'm not sitting in the car, so none, none of the screens or anything are on. Uh, now, there's always the vampire loads from the uh, from the uh, you know the electronics that never seem to shut off. So those vampire loads could be causing the DC to DC converter to run continuously. Don't know how much that's going to impact the life of it, but this is just my these are just my opinions on a possibility of why we are getting early failure of some batteries. Um, that performance model that I had as a loaner 
actually rolled all four windows down um, the night that I, the first night that I had it, and uh, I alerted the service center to the fact of that when I dropped it off the next day to pick up my car, and um, uh, his first thing he said is, oh, it looks like we got another 12-volt battery failure, and uh, that car was newer than mine. It was about two or 3,000 uh, VIN numbers higher than mine. Um, I don't know how their sequencing works because I know people that received their car before mine uh, that had VIN numbers quite a bit higher than mine and I know people that received their car after mine that had lower VIN numbers. So yeah, we're staying right around there. Well, I'm going to put the camera down now. I'll see you guys next video. Yes, I am trying, doing my best to find the time to do a walk around of the vehicle, go over what the service center fixed, and uh, what is a little worse-ish, and um, what problems have cropped up since going to the service center. Um, I will tell you that in generally in general they fixed all my water issues except one I have two tiny little marker tail lights um, I'll have to show you guys um, still have moisture that's getting in them otherwise for the most part the main the actual tail lights themselves um, have been remedied um, they took care of some service bulletins uh, but it seems the service bulletins that they did on my door windows uh, which uh, I didn't even know there was a problem with. Uh, now my, at least my driver's side door kind of squeaks a little bit now, and uh, my rear driver's side, or yeah, my rear driver's side window doesn't roll down quick enough when you open the door, and the glass can hit the uh, hit the door frame. Just some some of what's coming up. So I'll print out the uh, the whole sheet that they had for me uh, for what they did to my car and I'll just go down the checklist one by one uh, some things won't be listed on that as um, some things weren't weren't a problem I will tell you they they also adjusted my trunk lid to prevent the trunk lid from rubbing on the rear bumper uh, I've adjusted that further to try and keep the door even higher up but I am still getting trunk lid rubbing on my bumper and we're just about through the clear coat and we're going to be starting to rub through the paint I got to give them a call on that again because um, I, I wasn't going to have a bump the bumper replaced and they, they were going to charge me for a bumper but uh, at this point I would like a, a new rear bumper um, as I'm, I'm going through the paint and uh, it's not something that I'm causing so I don't see how that would not be covered under the body warranty that's it. Clocking out.